We have such a great God. Hallelujah. And you know, today's scripture will be from one, uh, Psalms 139, 1 through 7. And it's God's perfect knowledge of man. So he knew what I needed that day. And he brought me from one place to another. Thank you, Jesus. I am excited about that part. He also knows I need glasses, so let me get started. Okay, Psalm, would you stand for the reading, please? Psalms 139, verses 1 through 7. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thoughts afar off. You comprehend, comprehend my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue but behold, O oh Lord, you know it all together. Yes. You have hedged me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. Mm -hmm. It is high. I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? <laughs> Amen. He is blessed. Let us pray. Most kind, gracious Heavenly Father, we come right now in the mighty name of your precious Son, Jesus. Thank you, God. Lord, I just want to thank you for keeping your arms around me, old Master, yes. as I travel to and fro. You know all the dangers that were seen and unseen, Lord. So we ask you to keep us in your care. We thank you for knowing our every thought, our every uprising and down city. We thank you, O oh Lord, that there is none like you that know us like you know us, Jesus. For who is man that you are so mindful of us? Thank you for being omnipresent. You're everywhere all at once. Yes, you We are. thank you for just being God and God all by yourself. There is none that can do what you do. Uh, we thank you for looking down upon us and keeping us, Father, in your care. We thank you, O oh Lord, that you and you alone know all about us, Jesus. We thank you that you care for us, oh, that you give us the right way to go. We thank you for that path that you have laid out for us, O oh God, and that you have kept us on that path. Oh, Jesus, we thank you for blessing the sick and the shut in. God, bless them now and let them know that they are loved and that you, O oh Father, are the master doctor. You can touch right now. Take the hem of your garment, oh God, and sweep over them right now. Sweep, Jesus. Sweep as never before. Take your nail-scarred hands and touch. Touch, Father. Touch and heal their bodies. For you alone are the master healer. We thank you, oh God, for all that you've done, all that you're doing, and all that you're going to do. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. I need you to clap your hands and give God a great praise in this house. Can you lift it up a little bit higher? Can you open your mouth? Those that are glad to be in the house of the Lord, one more time, I need you to make a thunderous noise in here. It's Sunday morning. You ought to look at your neighbor and say, it's Sunday morning. It's Sunday morning. What did we come to do? We came to lift up God because he's done marvelous things. He's done wonderful things, and you ought to praise him. Those of you that are joining us online, come on in in the spirit. It's in the sanctuary. can be right there where you are. We want to lift up the name of Jesus today because he's done marvelous things.
vanity and pride. Carry not my Lord was crucified. Oh, but the grace that brought it down to man. Woo! It says mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty. Where was it found? At Calvary. At Calvary. Pray for us as we sing Calvary.
you ought to tell somebody when I think about it. The saints of old would say, when I think on the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, when I think about how he set me free, when I think about it, couldn't have been nobody but Jesus. Something happens when I begin to think about what God has done for me. If there was no Calvary, then we're all here by mistake. But because he got up, Altos, when I think about in the thoughts of how good God's been. Hallelujah. Hey, can y'all just give me 60 seconds?
morning service where I believe the atmosphere is now set and charged for the blessings of the Lord to take place. You know, you got to get it to a right frequency. And then you can, when you hit the right frequency, miracles can happen. Oh, all right. So those families that we're going to be blessing babies today, if they can come at this time. Of course, we here at the New Bethel Church, you know, you've seen in some places where they will christen or they will baptize uh, children, but we here at the New Bethel Church believe in the scriptures to practice what Jesus practiced. And he blessed the babies. He did not christen them or sprinkle them, but he blessed them. So as these families are coming together and gathering, amen, we're going to ask our very own elder, Mary Green, if she would come at this time with our scripture. Mark chapter 10. I will be reading verses 13 through 16. And they brought young children to him, that he should touch them. And his disciples rebuked those that brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased and said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands upon them, and blessed them. Amen. As we continue in this uh, part of the service, I am going to be praying over the godparents. It's a blessing when a baby comes into the world, but it's even greater when you can give them godparents and choose some individuals that you want them to be impressed, be able to impress and, you know, give them support. So let me go ahead and pray over the godparents. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. Father, we stand before you lifting up the godparents on today. Those that have been chosen, Lord, to provide support to provide spiritual nourishment, Lord. Those that you have called, Lord, for this, this role in these babies' lives, we ask that you would bless them, Lord. Strengthen them, Lord. Even when circumstances may not be favorable in their lives, allow them to be the support that the child needs, Lord. Father, we ask that you would lead and guide them as they give the support to the parents as well as the overall family for these children. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. I have been given the task of praying for the grandparents. Mm. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, the accolades about you are already stated. They're already known, God. And so, Father, as I lift up these grandparents to you right now, Father, I'm asking that you allow them to impart upon these babies, Lord, their experience the things that they've learned as they parented their own kids, Lord. Now give them the opportunity to download into these grandbabies, Lord, their experience, their strength, their hope, their trust, and their faith in you, God. And so, Father, as we are uh, blessing these grandparents, Lord, we're asking that you give them plenty time, Lord, to put into these children what it is that they need to have. We love you, Lord. We trust you. We honor you. And nothing that we've asked for is too hard for you. So have your way with every grandparent, God, that they can do what it is that you have for them to do. Just like Abraham. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And at this time, I'm going to pray for all of the parents. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for these parents that you have blessed with promises, God. 
We thank you for each father, each mother. We pray, God, because you have charged them with a charge to train up a child as they should go. And when they get older, they will not go straight. So, Father, we pray right now for them to have wisdom, for them to have the knowledge and the intellect of God to guide their children in the way that they should go. God, we charge them now to teach them, to rear and raise them, to pray over them daily, to cover them, God, in the name of Jesus, so that when they get older, God, that they will know you because their parents taught them to know you. I pray, God, for every hand of fathers, every hand of mothers, that when they lay their hands on their children, even at night, God, that angels would encamp around about them. In the name of Jesus, we empower them now. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We're grateful to God for his blessing. God has been so good to us. What a blessing to have babies dedicated to the Lord, especially in a time like this. I'm grateful that I'm able to extend to them the blessings of the Lord, and I'm going to ask that one of the parents would come and bring your baby and just stand here. getting emotional to have men take responsibility for their children. Now, I don't do things just to do them or to have a good program. I try to follow the spirit of the Lord. And I want Elder Rhonda Wells to join me. God impressed upon me, Mother Fleming, that these babies have a special anointing on them. And God going to use them in a mighty way. Elder Wells is anointed in the spirit of prophecy. I've seen it happen. In fact, for us just to be here is because of a word she gave her son. And I've seen what happened. I felt led of the Lord that while I'm praying the blessing upon the baby, She's going to speak into their lives. And because this is of God, I already spoke with her. No one knew. Gave her the name so she could begin to pray. Lord, how do you want me to speak into their lives? So as I anoint them, Elder Wells is going to Speak into the, you know, they don't, they don't understand what she's saying. You might say, but she's talking to their spirit. Yeah. Hallelujah. If you would stand to your feet as we begin to anoint these beautiful babies, Father, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Lord God, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Grateful, God, for how we have blessed you to come in this world to provide her with parents, grandparents that love her. I pray in the name of Jesus that you'll bless her right now. Dispatch angels that will be charged for her as she goes through this life. And I pray, God, that you'll keep her from those that will try to do her harm. Those that will try to pimp her. But God, she's anointed for the work of the Lord. Surround her, God, with those that will bring out the best in her. That she'll be used mightily in the service of the Lord. In Jesus' name. God and with man. You will have favor with your school teachers, with your parents, and you shall lack nothing. You are a royal priesthood, and God shall be with you all the days of your life. I speak protection over you, I speak guidance over you, and I speak wisdom over you. You are anointed and appointed to serve the Lord, say the Lord God of Oh God, we thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, that you would warn about any disease that he's whole. God, thank you for his mind. Thank you for his ability to walk and to talk and to be able to do the things of you. I bring out the blessings of God upon him. And angels specifically will watch over him. God, in the name of Jesus, keep him, Lord. Surround him with those that will bless him. Help him to obtain, God. We know greatness is in him. Hallelujah! There's an anointing on his life. And I pray that you'll keep him from hurt, harm, and danger, from accidents, and those that will try to destroy him. But, Lord, we speak right now the blessings of God. This child has been dedicated back to you. Yes. Yes. Sir Dawson Calvin Willis, Jeremiah 1 and 5 says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. Sir Dawson Calvin Willis, I decree and declare protection over you. I cancel every generational curse. Yes.
there's something special about this baby. And I'm grateful, Lord, for how you're using her even now. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, I pray for blessings. That you, Lord, will keep her from hurt, harm, and danger. I ask angels now to come and specifically walk with her. Be with her. Keep her from accidents. Those that will try to destroy her. Lord, there's an anointing upon her. And I pray all your life in the name of Jesus. This baby that you've given, we give back to you, Lord. Dedicated unto your service. In the name of Jesus. Show the 
Now you know these are sanctified babies. They all sleep in church. And lastly, this is, uh, a, oh, how could I forget this? Amelia Rose. One more time, give God praise for all of our places that have been blessed. In Jesus' name, you may be seated. Well, the choir is coming with their last selection, and I've got a word for the house. Come on, Pastor Relliford. Come on, clap your hands one more time. Give me a little bit more volume here. Come on, clap your hands one more time for all of these wonderful babies. But I know that they would not be here except God allowed it. Everything good that happens, God did it. Every healing that happens, God did it. Blessings that happen, God did it. When he makes ways out of no way, you can guarantee that God did it. Put your hands together for Sister Dee Richardson. Oh, yes, he did. 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 Oh, yes, he did.
including uh, Sister Angie Stovall Morris. Services for her husband were yesterday along with Sister Patricia McCullough in the loss of her sister and Yolanda McKinney with her uncle. And remember Amaris and Alexis in a special way, one of their uh, cheerleading workers that they came up together cheerleading for the Kansas City Chiefs died suddenly, lost the baby as well. And of course, they were very close. In fact, she was even here, did a class for us, uh, Crystal Anderson. And uh, we want to pray for them and keep them in prayer. Now, some of you know that I had a little fall, and the doctors have concluded I do need surgery repair a rotary cuff injury. Uh, how am I feeling? Well, I know God's in it. Hallelujah. And I'll even share more about that this week. But for me, I ask for these three particular prayers. Uh, first of all, I don't have the surgery date yet, but ask God to guide the surgeon. Mr. Relaford, you getting these? Guide the surgeon. Secondly, miraculous healing. And then lastly, successful therapy and rehab. We know what God can do. I said, we know what God can do. Where's Brother Jerry McKinney? Uh, Jerry, uh, 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 Brother Jerry King. Stand up, Brother Jerry King. Jerry has been battling cancer and was knocking at death's door. But through the prayers of the saints, hallelujah, and a righteous God we serve, this past Thursday, the doctors declare cancer free. Hallelujah. Cancer free. There's nothing too hard for the Lord. 
Brother Tyrone, go back and hug Brother King for all of us. Celebrate. Give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. I got to be careful. They said, don't make any sudden jerks. But when the Spirit of the Lord begins to move, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Uh, hold off, hold off, hold off, hold off. This week, we start our uh, week of consecration. I'm going to be sharing uh, with you uh, the details at the end of service, but the theme is, Speak, Lord, I'm listening. Speak, Lord. I'm listening will be starting tomorrow through Friday. And this is, of course, during our year of Selah. Uh, let me get into the word, and I'll share some other things at the conclusion of the service. But I feel the spirit of the Lord in this place. Today is Palm Sunday has been indicated. This is the day that Jesus made his triumphant entry into Jerusalem, they laid down palms and coats and began to wave them, crying, Hosanna to the son of David, Hosanna in the highest. But just a few days later, another crowd was saying, crucify him. But for today, the Lord has given me a word for the house. Weren't we blessed by all of the staff pastors who have preached the previous weeks? Thank God. Hallelujah. Thank God. So uh, let me share with you what the Lord has put in my spirit. And I'll be doing some teaching this week with Life Impact, which will be uh, personal, uh, in person. But I want to begin with today's text. Follow me, please. And remember, this word is for you. Look at somebody and just tell them this word is for you. I said, tell somebody this word is for you. Now, look, point your finger and say, this word is for me. The text is coming from the 29th Psalm of David. And throughout this psalm, I won't read all of the verses, but it highlights the voice of the Lord. Verse number one says, Give unto the Lord, O ye mighty ones, give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due to his name and worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is over many waters. Then he says this, the voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of The voice of the Lord is powerful. Today's message is entitled, You Can't Escape His Voice. You can't escape His voice. Now, before I get into the crux of the message, I want to lay an important foundation for us. As a reminder, the strategy of the enemy, as we learn in St. John chapter 10, verse 10, is to steal, 
to kill, and to destroy. That is his strategy. That is his objective. But tactics deals with how does he do it. In military, they have a strategy, but when you hear tactics, it's how do you bring that plan into fruition? So since the adversary seeks to steal, kill, and ultimately destroy, how does he do it? There are two primary ways. He wants you to believe and declare there is no God. He wants you to, in yourself, believe and declare there is no God. We call those atheists. Because if you don't believe there's a God, then you don't believe that he can save you. You don't believe that he ultimately has a path for you to live by. Nor do you have a purpose. Many of those who are atheists believe when you die, that's it. It's over. So that's what the adversary would want, is to everyone to declare there is no God, even though he knows there's a God. And he will have to bow before him one day. Now, if he cannot get you to believe there is no God, the next thing is for you to decide, well, maybe there is a God, but he would never know me personally. Oh, there's got to be a strong force that keeps the universe in place, but little old me in Kansas City, Kansas, he don't know me. He don't, he don't know my name. He's not concerned about me. Oh, there is a God, but uh, he's too busy doing something to worry about me. So those we call agnostics. Atheists believe there is no God. Agnostics say, well, maybe there is one, but he doesn't really know me. Now stay with me. I got to lay this foundation first. I want the team to show you a live feed. This is live. In this live feed, it's called the world meter. That is the current world population. Almost 8.1 billion people. You might not be able to see it because it's kind of slow, but it actually indicates the birth, people being born right now. And at the same time, it's also showing those who die right now. And as you can see, more people are being born than those that die. So the population is constantly increasing. 8.1 billion people. How does the Lord know me? Listen, I have trouble, I have trouble calling my girls the right name. And there's only two of them <laughs> with Amelia and Angela and Amaris and Alexis I get them all mixed up. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Because you do it too. Amen, Chris. You got all them kids. You and Bree, you know I'm telling the truth. Don't be trying to talk to mom right now. I'm talking to you. Now, if we get mixed up with our own kids, they would be 
everything. We've been in church now. We've had new members. Some of you don't even know the names of the new members. All you do is know their faces. And you just smile. Praise the Lord. Confession, oftentimes I got to walk in Noel's office. Now, Noel, who is that person? <laughs> the devil wants you to believe that you're insignificant. You're just one in a billion people that he has no concern about. But the devil is a lie. Somebody shout, the devil is a lie. He's not just a liar, he is a lie. Now, this is what I want to show you. Put up the next slide for me. The world population is 8.1 billion people. I showed that to you, it's live, Larry. But I want you to see, the Google search, anybody ever use the Google search engine? Y'all might be using it right now. The Google search engine processes how much data each day. This is called 20 petabytes. 20 petabytes. I know you don't understand it because I don't even understand it. All I know is this. Billions show nine zeros. Petabytes show 15 zeros. In one day. What am I getting at? If man can create a computer and software that is able to generate 20 petabytes every day, what would limit God from knowing who you are? If man with his Wisdom and his mind is capable of creating a, a, a computer and software to be able to generate this. And remember, this is just one search engine. How many search engines out there? In fact, they don't even know how much knowledge Google has. And if man can do that, the other day, uh, Musk now is now working with putting a chip in your brain that you can control without even using your hands. Your brain can tell different things to move. Just the other day, we've had a, 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 a pig kidney given as a transplant into a person who was on dialysis, and it's working. They're projecting that dia uh, the dialysis is going to become eliminated. Now, if man can do that, and if you believe in God, what would limit him from knowing Pat Carter, A.C. Relaford? You know what I'm saying? But the devil will have you believe you're insignificant. That, that no one knows you, especially God. But that's why I'm here today to declare you can't escape his voice. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. We read the voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The, the Lord is over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. But God does not always use the dramatic. Remember, it was Elijah who was in a cave at the fear of Jezebel when the Spirit of the Lord came to him and told him, go out and stand on the mountain. 
And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and a strong wind tore into the mountains, broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And then after the fire, a still, small voice. And that's when Elijah heard the Lord. See, God has a way of speaking that will penetrate to your heart. And you see, oftentimes we're not hearing from God because we're distracted. Our attention is somewhere else. You who have children, even you who are adults, you can be so engrossed in something that somebody's calling your name, but because you're so engrossed in what you're doing, you don't hear them. How many times has God spoken to us, but we're distracted? Hallelujah. And you see, when the voice of the Lord penetrates your heart, he speaks in such a way that you cannot deny it's God. You can try to. You can drown him out. You can declare it's not him, but God will keep on pushing you. I remember when I came to the Lord, teenager. I was sitting way in the back of a tent. Some of y'all don't know about tent meetings. Of course I grew up in the church. I, I'm one of those that grew up in the church. Others did not. But just because you grow up in the church doesn't mean you don't need Christ too. And sometimes you need him more. Because you have this self-confidence. Oh, I'm going to make it in. I've been in church all your life, but you've been a devil all your life in church. I said, way in the back where sweetie mama is. That's what I called your name. The preacher preached. Choir sang. Listen, I could not tell you what he preached. I was back there fooling around. See, we did not have phones back then. We we played hangman with pen and pencil. Tic tac toe. Passing notes. If you like me, write yes. If you don't, write no. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. See, these kids don't know about that. I was back there fooling around. Not even, I couldn't even tell you what the preacher preached. But when the altar call came, And the preacher said, who wants to give their life to Christ? It was as if the thunders were rolling. The fire was going. God had got my attention. Listen, the Lord will deal with you. It won't just happen all the time suddenly, but there'll be a process where God is dealing with you. Telling you it's time to make a change. Telling you what you're doing isn't right. Telling you where you're going is not where I told you to go. And who you're messing with, get away from them. Oh, I wish I could preach like I want to. God will warn you before anything comes. Ooh, just, just wait till Wednesday, the life impact Bible study. God has a way of getting our attention. 
The Sean, Pastor Relever, brought it out last week. This is the year of Selah where it's supposed to be intentional pausing. But when you don't intentionally pause, God will pause you himself. If God has determined he's going to use you, he will speak and cause miracles to happen in your life that you know this has to be God. And it's not always what the Lord doesn't want you to do. Sometimes you've made decisions, even in the name of the Lord, that God was not in. I've learned just because the Lord, uh, just because the person says, well, the Lord told me. Sometimes you got to try the Spirit. Because people will say, this is what the Lord, and the Lord's not in it. They're just trying to create the ability for you to accept what they've decided. But you cannot escape from his voice. Ooh. I'm trying not to jerk. Ooh, glory to God. And guess what? There's no, Sister McGinnis, there's no age limit on it. No matter how young, no matter how old, no matter your background, your ethnicity, your sexual preference, God does not care. He'll speak to you. Hallelujah. And here is the dangerous thing. When you know God has been speaking, and all of a sudden, you don't hear him anymore. It's not that he's necessarily um, in agreement, but there's something called a reprobate mind. Where he will... You want it so bad, he'll turn you over to it. So as long as you still have condemnation, as long as you still have guilt, as long as you know that God is dealing with you, honey, you better thank God even though you might not be in what he's telling you to do, but God has not given up on you. Lord, don't give up on me. That's why, parents, you got to keep on praying for your child. Grandparents got to keep on praying for your family. Lord, whatever you do, don't leave me. Lord, don't leave me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it's impossible for you to drown out the voice of God. Hallelujah. Now, saints, I'm telling you now, I did not come out here and ha know or talk. I'm going to preach this message specifically to this person. No, no, no. I'm just preaching what God said. And God has a way of preaching one message and reaching 150 people with a different answer. God does know you personally. And he's talking to you. You can't escape his voice. Hallelujah. And sometimes it's a still small voice. Hallelujah. I hear you, Brother Ray. Some of you know you should be operating in your ministry. Don't get quiet on me. God has over 
and over and over to tell you you've got to get busy. But you know what it's going to cost you. And because you're not willing to pay the price, you keep on ignoring, igging, igging God. But he needs you. Look at somebody tell him, he needs you. I have seen through my tenure, this year it'll be 15 years pastoring this great church. God has never failed us yet. Instances where people left, maybe in key positions, but it looked like within a week, God has somebody else. Raised them up, brought them from afar, so that the program of God does not go lacking. What am I getting at? You ain't all that. Success is not dependent upon you. Because the moment you feel as if nobody can do it like you, God's got somebody in the wings. And there's nothing worse. Hear me. There's nothing worse to see somebody operating in your anointing. When you know God was telling you and you refused, now somebody else God is using. That's, that's what happened to King Saul because the anointing was taken from him and put on David. He lost the anointing because he refused to listen to God's voice. So God said, all right, I'll raise up somebody who is the least possible consideration. But if God chooses you, you've got everything you need. That's why you see in the scripture, the spirit would come over Saul They'd be eating at the table, look across the table, see David there. He recognizes he has the anointing. He would take his, his, his spear and try to kill him right there. See, fool will try to kill you. Oh, y'all don't hear me. I don't necessarily mean you physically, not necessarily. Me, not necessarily. <laughs> mean you physically. There are those who will try to kill your reputation. Kill your relationships. Oh, somebody hear me, saints? Glory. Uh, stand up, Sean. And stand up, Misa. This their husband and wife. Blow each other a kiss. Oh. <laughs> now let's say they were dating. Here come. I heard you talking about me the other day, so here come Danielle. She comes sending videos of me and other I got you. Oh, that's hush. <laughs> so they're dating. Danielle gets up and whispers in LaShawn's ear. Don't, don't act like you can't get up. She's whispering. You don't know me so like I do. You might think she's there for you. But I saw her the other day, and she was weak, winking at a married man, Deacon Nicky. <laughs> and if the 
Listen, Saint, this is real. This is real. If LaShawn's not careful, influencers will cause you to walk away from your blessing. Thank you, thank you. And what happens, listen to me, saints. I know this is real. Danielle is trying to get rid of Misa because she's the one who really wants LaShawn. I've seen it happen, saints. What am I saying? I've used this natural illustration to show you spiritually when God has his hands on you, the devil will try to get you out of your anointing. When we'll even use people in the church behind the pulpit who are singing who have no touch with God. I'm almost finished. I'm almost finished. But I ain't preached in a while, so I got some strength. I'm almost finished. I, 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 when, I, when I call Elder Wells, and I call her Rhonda, because we're family. See, I don't believe in using titles among family. Titles only represent my position when I'm operating in it. But when I'm not operating in it, I ain't no bishop, apostle, prophet. I've been at people's table where you pass the, 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 the butter, Deacon Smith. I sure will, Sister Smith. Get rid of the title. He don't mean all that. I'm apostle because you paid $25. Oh, I'm sorry. When I called Elder Wells and gave her what the Lord was putting in my spirit, first of all, I said, don't tell anybody. Because sometimes... You can tell something, and because they don't understand your assignment, they'll call you crazy. They'll try to talk you out of it. They'll try to put their spin on it. And because I did not want it tainted, there was something that happened up here a few minutes ago with these children. I said, Rhonda, don't you tell anyone. Now, she said, I do got to tell my husband. I said, go ahead and tell him, because he's not here. Hallelujah. And we were sharing how sometimes people understand when you're in our position, God gives us an assignment that people don't often understand. And it's not as if they're doing something wrong negatively, but when you're, when you're here and you know God is telling you to do something, you cannot be swayed or influenced because your assignment is critical. I believe what she spoke was confirmed in heaven. What if I didn't bring her up here knowing that some folk will say, watch, he got her. He's not even a member of the church. You don't hear me, saints. I could have messed up not just each one of their children, these babies' future, but the influence these babies are going to have on so many others. My final scripture, I'm heading, I'm closing. As Pastor McKinney said, I did not say I'm closing, I'm closing, which means uh, I'm on my way. <laughs> so, hallelujah, dedicated, anointed, man of God who believed in Judaism, who knelt 
at the feet of those who were skilled and scholars in Judaism who dedicated his life unto that church, unto that religion. But that's not where God was at. Just because you belong to a church and you're doing your all doesn't mean that's where God wants you. Saul, one who went and imprisoned Christians, one who was uh, going around trying to kill Christians, hated them. He went and said, I need a letter to allow me to go and in Damascus, we know there's Christians there. Give me the right to go in and, and arrest them. Well, the Bible says, then Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, and as he journeyed, he came near to Damascus, and suddenly there was a light that shone around him from heaven. The Bible says he fell to the ground and what? Heard a voice. Heard a voice. Sometimes you won't see where it's coming from. And there's no mistaking the voice of the Lord. See, God uses me, the staff pastors, others, as instruments. But when I'm preaching like this, this isn't Glenn declaring. This is what God is speaking. And God is a way to let you know I'm talking to you. You can't escape his voice. And he heard the voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He asked the question, who are you, Lord? Then the Lord said, I am Jesus. See, if you're sincere, God will reveal and confirm his word unto you. He'll let you know time to make it there. It's going to cost you to step out. I'm going to have a, a SELA enrichment conference in May. It's going to be powerful. God already gave me the theme. All of the speakers have been confirmed. I even shared, I've not shared with anyone who they are. None of them have ever been to New Bethel before. But I've been, wor I've been working the scene behind the scenes. And the theme is faith for an uncomfortable assignment. Faith for an uncomfortable assignment. As you make this walk, you got to hear what God is saying. The Lord said, I am Jesus. What happened? The Bible said, so he trembling and astonished. Lord, what do you want me to do? That's what you have to ask God. That's the theme of our consecration coming up. Speak, Lord, I'm listening. You see how God puts things together? Speak, Lord, I'm listening. What? Do you want me to do? Then the Lord said to him, Arise, go into the city. Gives him specific instructions who he should go to, what household he should go to. And then the person who owned the house received a word from God directly somebody's coming to your house that you're to lay hands on. God got his stuff together. But you can be the clog that works against God. And this is what I want you to see. The men who journeyed with him stood speechless because they heard the Lord, they heard this voice, 
but they didn't see it. Sometimes God is speaking so loud to you that others can hear what God's telling you to do and you don't hear him yourself. But you can't escape his voice. If you've been blessed today, give God praise. I said, if you've been blessed, give God praise. Don't clap for me. Give God praise. You can't escape his voice. When the Lord has told you to do something, yes, sir. I hear you, Holy Ghost. I hear you, Holy Ghost. The, one of the greatest hindrances in us moving to where God wants us is pride. When you've made some decisions that maybe not always were congruent with what God wanted, and then you get the revelation, this is not what God wants. You don't want to get to your place because you'll feel embarrassed. You're afraid of what people will say. I've got, uh, Mary, I've gotten to the place in life, I can't worry about what you think of me. Uh, 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 things are too crucial. Listen, listen, I'm finished. I have never intentionally tried to hurt anybody. From my perspective, I love everyone. But the devil will get in your ear and make you feel, Bishop got something against you. Now you're looking at me with a crooked eye. And I'm thinking something wrong with your eye. <laughs> That's why the scripture says, if you have an art against somebody, go to them in love. That way you can get it straight. Pastor, the other day you walked by me, you didn't even speak. The first thing I'm going to say is, I am sorry. I didn't intend to do that. The devil put in your spirit. He don't want you around him anymore. No, 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 no. Right at that moment, somebody had called me because there was an emergency, and I had to get to where I was going. So it wasn't that I was trying to, to, to slight on you. My assignment at that moment took priority in me just saying, praise the Lord. And I got to be truthful. There's some people you don't even want to stop and speak to. And don't ask the question, how are you doing? You don't even want to open that door. Look at somebody and just tell them, you can't escape his voice. One more time, give God praise in the house. And I know the Lord has spoken to somebody this morning. Hallelujah. I'm going to share on Wednesday. We're having an in-person service on Wednesday. There's some hard decisions I've got to make. And you got to be in a place where you hear what God is saying. But the Lord is speaking. Not Glenn. Not Andre. Not Carl. And 
certainly not AC, but no, no. Uh, As you can tell, we got a family here. I love to inject humor because it it helps us to digest what God is saying. So very quickly, you who know that the Lord has called you, you might not even know all of what the Lord is saying, but you want clarity to hear God. I, I, let me have some of my altar evangelists come. If you know God has spoken to you, come on down here right now. Come, come. We want to pray with you. We just want the Lord to bless you. Sometimes you might not even know what God is saying, but you just want clarity. Come on down here right now. Come, 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 come. Come, come. Who else? Who else? Who else? That's right. That's right. That's right. Come on. Come on and give God praise for these who are coming. Who else? God's calling you. God's calling you. Today, you can turn your life around. Today, you can declare, I'm ready to make a change in my life. Hallelujah. I hear the Lord. He's speaking. He's speaking. The choir is singing, speak to my heart, Lord. Holy Spirit. Come, come, come. If the Lord is telling you, New Bethel's where you should be a member, I'd love to have you. If God's leading you, come on, come on. If you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, if you want to be baptized in Jesus' name, come, come, sing it out. There's somebody else, there's somebody else. The Spirit of the Lord is moving in here. Come, 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 come. Oh, bless the baby. Yes, Lord. Who else? Who else? Lord, I need to hear you. God, I need to understand. Where must I go? What must I do? Lord, give me direction and clarity. Come, come, come. There's somebody else. There's somebody else. There's somebody else. There's somebody else. I shall lead the wall. Come, 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 come. We've seen God work miracles. You can't escape his voice. Hallelujah. Woo. God is speaking right now. Who else? Who else? Who else? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Jesus, Jesus, speak to my heart, Lord. Who else, who else? We're waiting on you, we're waiting on you, we're waiting on you. Come on, Elder Wells. Come on, Elder Wells. Come on, Elder Wells. Speak to my heart, Lord. alone, Lord. I can't do this alone. I need you, Lord. Lord, let your spirit guide. Hey, speak to my heart, Lord. Yeah. Give me your holy word, yeah. If I can't hear from you, then 
that has come up for prayer and every individual that is in the house today God I cancel the spirit of infirmities I cancel the spirit of lack and doubt I cancel the spirit of just not enough now Father God I decree over your people that they are the head and not the tail that they are above and not beneath now Father God on this week many of us need miracles we need a miracle there's some that are, are fighting affliction. Some are fighting some diagnosis. But Father God, I ask you to let your signs, miracles, and wonder manifest this week, God. Even in our finances, Father God. Increase in the finances. Give us wisdom and direction, God, on how to handle money, God. Father God, increase the faith of your people. Father God, there is nothing too hard for you, God. I decree and declare over your people that signs, miracles, and wonders shall take place this week. Some of you are, are doubting. Some of you all don't even know what to do. But the Lord said, trust me. Believe in me. It's not in your faith. It's not in your power. It's not in your might. But it's in his spirit. Whoever I'm talking to, the Lord wants to show you that he's God and he's God all by himself. There is nothing too hard for him. You just have to believe the word. Let the word do the work. Decree the word. Don't say what you think. Don't say what you feel. But say the word of God. The word cannot lie. It shall accomplish. I want to encourage you. Speak the word. Hallelujah. Speak the promises, not the problem. Yeah, God. Speak the promises, not the problem. Say the promise, not the problem. God said, watch me do the miracle in your life. Watch me manifest my word, because I cannot lie, said the Lord God of hosts in Jesus' name. Come on and give God praise in the house. Hallelujah. Let me have the light. Certainly today I pray you have been blessed. Thank you, thank you, altar staff. How many were blessed today in the name of the Lord? Ooh. 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 Ooh.
of Jesus. I need some, I need some worshipers in the name of Jesus. I need some worshipers in the name of Jesus. Hey! 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 Woo! Come on and give God praise. Hallelujah. week we tried to leave and the spirit of the Lord came in this place. The power of God started to move. Give me a moan right quick. Give me a moan. Give me a moan. We gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta go. Hasha, Iboko This week, we are in our consecration. We have handouts that you can pick up. You can start getting your offering ready as I share what we'll be doing this week. Now, you ask the Lord to speak to you. I'm getting ready to tell you. This week, we will be fasting from 12 midnight to 4 
p.m. every day. There are specific scriptures you're to read each day. Now, I always tell you, follow your doctor's instructions. Some might say you might have to take a little something with your medicine. Whatever you do, don't stop taking your medicine. But if you've got to take a little something, just get you a little applesauce. You don't need to get two pancakes, three eggs, toast, and talk about I got to take a meal with my medicine. <laughs> the devil is a lie. Also, we're going to see if you really love the Lord. This week, Monday through Friday, no social media. We got to hear what the Lord is saying. No TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, X or Twitter, whichever one. And if you belong to Trump's social page, uh, you need prayer anyway. All right. Minimal TV and media entertainment. I didn't say no, but m minimal. Spend this time hearing what God's saying to you. Audrey, I'm glad to see God brought you out. Ooh. I'm looking for healing this week. I'm looking for miracles. You might not even be a member of New Bethel, but you can join us. Wednesday, I will be teaching here in the sanctuary. There'll be prayer 6.30 to 7, then I'll start teaching at 7 o'clock. Now, the Lord put something in my spirit this week. We're doing something I've never done before. We're having a sunrise Christian consecration phone-in service. 6 a.m. to 6.30 a.m. The Lord put in my spirit to have these individuals call in. They're going to spend 15 minutes in exhortation and then lead us in 15 minutes of prayer. Monday, Bishop Gregory Newman from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Tuesday, Bishop James Laverne Tyson from Warren, Ohio. Wednesday, Pastor Cameron Adams from Charlotte, North Carolina. Thursday, a woman of God, Bishop Gwendolyn Weeks from Boston, Massachusetts. And then on Friday, Dr. Barbara Golder from Indianapolis, Indiana. Every one of them immediately say, Pastor, I'm with you. Not one Hesitation. And even when I said, give me your cash app because we want to bless you, they said, some of them. <laughs> Don't even, ex I'm not even expecting an honorarium because the Lord is in this. Move over, D, move over, move over this way so they can see. Move over this way. Get out the way. <laughs> That's the number you call. It's also on the handout with all of the instructions and, and, and also each scripture each day. That's the number. So you could be from anywhere in the world and join us. 6 a.m. Central Time. Now, for some of them where they live, they've got to get up and pray at 5 a.m. They still said, I want to do it. So... When you come on, you will not hear anyone but me and the speaker. Once I introduce the speaker, they are the ones that will handle the rest of the prayer. I, I believe in God for something. So that's going to be happening, and I pray that you'll be blessed. If you need a tied envelope, offering envelope, raise your hands up high. We'll also show the, the announcements again. First Lady. I want Angela to come. 
and welcome you in a minute, but she has her little lounge. But she felt led to have part of her lounge, what is called First Lady's Mother Care. Any person with a baby, and you need to feed your baby in privacy, change your baby, uh, things of that nature, you can go back to her lounge area. We put a changing station in there, comfortable chairs, TV going to be in there. You can watch TV from her lounge. Now, don't go back there and go sleep now. But come on and give God praise for First Lady. <laughs> Next Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, I'm asking everyone, to join me in giving a $100 offering next Sunday. Uh, thank you. I got some amens. Hallelujah. Now, if you can't give 100 give 50 or your best gift. But I need those who will join me in giving a special $100 offering. Carrie, you hear what I'm saying? Amen. You might not be here, so you can leave yours today. Glory to God. I'm just kidding. That's our, our friend. But again, that's going to happen, and I want you to be blessed. I'll tell you more about the Enrichment Conference. And finally, we've got some more of the SELA journals. These are special journals. We ran out of them twice. We ran out of them twice. You work so hard, I'm going to give this to you. Come on down here. This is our sister. Speak, Lord. Speak to me, New Bethel. Speak to me. But if you like one, now it costs way more than that, but we're only charging a dollar. It's way more than that. They only have a few. Now, don't go out there and, and get 20 of them for all your relatives. Your in-laws, your outlaws, all of them, because we want to make sure everyone gets one. If you need a tied envelope, offering envelope, raise your hands up high. Raise your hands up high. While they're doing that, uh, uh, let's run the announcements right quick. Afterwards, we'll have First Lady come and welcome everybody, and thank you for coming this morning. At the benediction, you'll just come and put your offerings in the vessel. Just walk down. You can also give by Givelify. You can go to our web page and give by PayPal. Also, you can do it by Cash App. So we've made it convenient for you to give, Good morning, and I'm appreciative and welcome of to the new everybody Church. giving in Jesus' name. This week is a special consecration week at the New Bethel Church. The theme is Speak, Lord, I'm Listening. Special booklets have been prepared with details. More information is also available online at newbethelkc.org. There will be a morning prayer service by phone every day this week at 6 a.m. Special guests will lead each call with exhortation and prayer. We invite you to participate. We invite you to join our YouTube channel for the weekly virtual Christian education class on Wednesday at 7 p.m. The current theme is do the best you can with your own life. We will continue our outreach efforts by offering a drive-up food market every first and third Wednesday from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. If you would like to volunteer, email pantry at NBCCDC. Special services for the youth and teens are held on each month's second and fourth Sundays. Each service includes age-appropriate lessons and activities. An adult in-person Sunday school class is held each Sunday at 9 a.m. Starting next month, there will be a youth Sunday school class. More details coming soon. Stay connected to the New Bethel Church throughout the week. Follow us on all major social media platforms. Our handle is New Bethel KC. Thank you for continuing to support the ministry efforts of the New Bethel Church. You may give to the ministry via mail, Givelify, Cash App, PayPal, or in person. This is the year of Selah. 
Have a blessed and wonderful week. Come on and give God praise, amen. We had children's church today. That's why uh, many of our children, they were already, and youth and teens, so we had a children's church ministry going on as well. Next year, even, I'm sorry, next week, the children even be part of our Easter program. So come on out, be blessed. Angela, greet everybody. Tell them how, how much we're glad to be here. Isn't First Lady looking good today? Like every day. Praise the Lord and good morning. We're so thankful to have each and every one of you, our guests, who have chosen to come and worship with us today. And it was a baby blessing morning. It wasn't it beautiful? It was beautiful. And I thank God for each of the families that supported each child, each baby that was blessed today. And you're so welcome to come and worship with us once again. And once again, I want to say we thank you. We welcome you here at New Bethel Church at any time for worship and for fellowship. Amen. All of the visitors and guests of those that had babies blessed, just stand to your feet so we can recognize you. All of those that are here. Well, oh, wow, look at God all over the place. Thank you so much for coming. It has been said and it's true. What about it? You belong here. Everybody stand to your feet. Glory to God. Come on, Pastor Burns. Give us the benediction. Yeah, I called on you. Glory to God. And don't forget, afterwards, you can bring your gifts unto the Lord. Right, right, right. Angela's reminding me to, uh, Andre is the godfather of our grandson. How many girls did you have? Four. Four. Now you got a grand Godson, oh, well, God, uh, Godson, Godson, amen. Amen. <laughs> amen, let's look to the Lord. Father, we thank you for a wonderful service on today. We thank you for blessing us with your presence. We ask that you would be with us as we leave this place. Never your presence. We ask that you would protect us and keep us through this passion week that we're about to embark upon. Allow our hearts to be postured and ready for what it is that you have to say to us. It is in Jesus' in the name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come, bring your gifts unto the Lord. Don't forget to get your instructions for the consecration. Everyone be blessed. I love you, and I'll see you on Wednesday.